I'm Andrew Vickers from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, and I'm going to be talking about reform of the Gleason score. Gleason score determines pretty much everything that we do in localized prostate cancer, whether on the left, we're going to put a man on active surveillance or treat them aggressively, for example, with a radical prostatectomy, or whether they might be eligible for focal therapy on the top right, or the bottom right, if they have radiotherapy, whether they get six months or two years of hormonal therapy, something that makes an enormous difference to a man's quality of life. That depends on whether they are in their grade groups two, three, or four. Now, I important to distinguish between scoring and grading. So grading is what the cells and the glands look like under the microscope. And pathologists have been working on this for, for many years and developing it. And um, it's really stood the test of time really quite remarkably. Um, so that, that's all well and good. Grading is terrific. Um, the problem is how you put the distribution and amount of those different patterns together in a score, which is really something for statisticians to do. Uh, rather than for pathologists. And the problem is that this was done way back in the 60s. This is the origin of the Gleason School Report paper in 1967 in the Journal of Urology. And it really hasn't changed much since. And this is even though that score was developed using endpoint of six-month survival, uh, which is completely inappropriate for the context of contemporary management of prostate cancer. So it's very, very out of date. And there are good reasons to believe that actually the Gleason score is inappropriate. It doesn't make sense. Now, grade group one is just patent three disease. We know that that requires, but in almost all cases, simply um, just surveillance, conservative management. And, and many people, myself included, would say, perhaps we shouldn't even call this cancer. If you have patent five disease, you're in grade group five, everyone knows you have very aggressive disease, you require very aggressive management. So most patients and most of the important decisions we have to make are in grade group uh, two to four. And whether you're in grade group two to four depends on the ratio of patent three to patent four. And that actually makes very little sense. So this is a schematic representation of biopsy cores where the blue is benign tissue, pink is pattern three, and red is pattern four. If you look at the cores on the right, you can see that the patient with the most pattern four, in other words, the greatest amount of aggressive cancer, and the most cancer overall, pattern four and pattern three, is in grade group two, whereas the patient with the smallest amount of pattern four and the, the lowest amount of cancer overall is put in the most aggressive uh, grade group category, grade group four. Uh, this isn't just hypothetical. We actually see this in real patients. So uh, this was a patient with pattern four that we put on active surveillance at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And between the baseline biopsy, which is shown on the left, and the confirmatory biopsy that was done at sort of 18 months or so, there was a massive increase in PAN4. It went from 0.4 millimeters to 10 millimeters of PAN4. So very rapid growth of aggressive disease, clearly indicative that this patient needs treatment. But because PAN3 increased more, this patient was not upgraded. In contrast, there was a patient with only a tiny increase in uh, pattern four, but because the amount of pattern three went down, this patient was upgraded. Uh, again, these are this is a, a real patient or two real patients. The blue is benign, uh, pink is pattern three, red is pattern four, uh, and the patient on the left had a larger prostate, which you can see. And these are actual from the RP specimens. A uh, patient on the left is grade group two. Patient on the right is grade group four. Patient on the left is potentially eligible for active surveillance and if put on radiotherapy wouldn't actually get particularly lengthy hormonal therapy patient on the right would be treated very very aggressively i, I find that very problematic um, now there's good evidence now that actually looking at the amount of pattern four uh, does a, a much better job of risk stratification than great groups so this was an initial paper that we published in uh, patients undergoing surgery uh, for a uh, grade group two disease. And we showed that the length of pattern four was highly predictive uh, of the risk of having advanced surgical pathology, for example, uh, seminal vesicle invasion. 
and lymph node invasion. And in fact, if patients had um, less than a millimeter or about a millimeter and a half of gleason 4 uh, on their biopsy, their risk of having advanced stage disease was about the same as if they were grade group one. This is uh, data from the University of California, San Francisco, and the University of Chicago. Uh, we found that the actual amount of pattern four in the radical prostatectomy specimen was a much better predictor of PSA level than uh, was grade group. Um, lots of other international data. This is from San Rafaele, and we're looking at the amount of uh, pattern four in the radical prostatectomy specimen. Again, it was the discrimination uh, for uh, advanced stage, like much better for if you actually quantify the amount of pattern four than if you just look at grade group. And this is from the University of Lille. On the left there have their published data. What, the, what they did was to estimate the amount of uh, pattern four or in their original paper, pattern five as well. They looked at the percentage of pattern four or five in the biopsy core and multiplied it by the size of the MRI lesion. Um, they found that uh, the volume of pattern four or five was a much better predictor than grade groups. Uh, we recently replicated this just looking at this key uh, grade group two to four uh, subgroup of men. And we found that estimating the volume of pattern four by, by a method that probably hasn't been optimized was not only way better than grade groups in predicting metastasis, but actually outperformed multivariable models such as the Kappa risk score. Um, so why does it even work at all if it's so ridiculous to, to, to use ratios? Uh, so I think this is explained in, in the this particular figure, what we can see is that the amount of pattern four is highly correlated with the grade group. So generally speaking, people with grade group four have more pattern four than uh, those in grade group three and grade group two. So it, it generally works, but there's a large area of overlap. And men in that overlap, I would put it to you, are being harmed by our current risk stratification algorithms. So why not tomorrow just start get rid of the Gleason score and, and go straight to quantifying pattern four. Uh, the problem is we don't actually know how to do it. So this is the, the data from the uh, Chicago and UCSF study. As you can see, very similar patients in terms of age and Gleason score and so on and so forth, uh, but about a fourfold difference in the estimate of pattern four volume in the radical prostatectomy specimen between the pathologists at those two, you know, very, very well, uh, very good institutions, academic institutions. Um, I, I've actually spoken to a bunch of pathologists. This is just for a, a biopsy core. Um, we've identified, and this is this is just a start, at least 10 different ways of calculating the amount of four. And, and many different ones are used by different institutions and different pathologists at those institutions. So what I'm suggesting, and I'm actually involved in a multi-center collaboration right now, is because we have uh, AI that is, is actually very good at identifying areas of pattern four and five and pattern three on a biopsy slide, um, is using digitized images of biopsy slides and trying different ways of quantifying the amount of pattern four and seeing how well those predict ultimate oncologic outcome. And that would actually be evidence-based pathology. If you can imagine we have, this is hypothetical data, we have different rules and we find the, the one with the, the predicts outcome best, but that would be the one to use. And that, that's totally different from what we currently do, which is very much a matter of sort of personal opinion and, and clinical experience. So in summary, Gleason score drives everything that we do about localized prostate cancer but the scoring system was developed in 1967, has not changed since, it was developed in a completely different context to contemporary prostate cancer care. Uh, there are some really obvious problems with it, and we've, it's been demonstrated that quantification of pattern four is better than the Gleason score and should replace it, um, and doing so would impact many tens of thousands of men a year, but we're not quite there yet because we don't actually know the best methods to quantify pattern for. Thank you very much.